Hey, what's going on? So I saw a tweet on Twitter the other day from a local YouTuber that does motion graphics and just cool graphic things. He was just asking if anybody knew of a way to turn the messy photo scan texture that happens from photo scans and how you could turn that into just like one cohesive photo scan. And what intrigued me about that question was I just found out the solution for that. Like like last month and it was it was like super recent and but i remember being in his shoes and i remember i remember i was like why what's the solution for this like how do you fix this right i once wondered that myself but then my boss he forwarded me a video from rocket lasso it was a video going through their whole photogrammetry pipeline from beginning to end and there was a lot of hidden gems but there was one fantastic tip that i learned from that video and it was exactly the solution to my problem it was exactly how you can take the messy texture that comes from your photo scans and turn them into one cohesive clean texture map and after that like the sky's the limit you can alter it in photoshop you can honestly just do whatever and then you could have not only a better uv map for your new mesh but you have a better texture map to do whatever you want with so basically what we're going to do today i'm going to regurgitate the tip that i learned from rocket lasso on how you can take the messy photogrammetry map and just turn it into one cohesive texture map that's clean it's beautiful and you can alter and you can edit to your free will if you want to check out their video they have a lot more photogrammetry tip and honestly everything i'm about to tell you I learned from them. Shout out to Aaron Covret and Rocket Lasso. They are some incredible artists. The only reason I want to make this tutorial is because even though Rocket Lasso's video is awesome and they have so much knowledge into it, it's an hour long. And it took me going through the entire hour long video to find that one tip. And honestly, just that one tip is all I need to finish my project at work. What I wanna do is make it a little simpler and just make a shorter video. I have this example. At work, I had to photo scan some baseball objects and one of them was a bat. So what I'm gonna do is show you that exact tip on this photo scan bat that I did. I'm just gonna show you the way you can turn the messy map into a clean one. But there's a couple of steps you need to go to before you can reach that UV unwrapping and baking stage, but Without further ado, let me just show you. I'm just gonna go on my computer, I'm just gonna show you everything. So you have the original 3D scan on the left here. And as you can see, it's, it's a baseball bat. And you know, it's pretty detailed. You know, you can zoom in, you can see all the cracks and all the dirt and the grime. It was a pretty dirty bat. The texturing actually is good, but let me show you what the actual texture that comes from the photo scan looks like. This is what it looks like. Again, it's it's a mess. So what I wanna show you is how we can turn this texture into something a little cohesive. I'll show you, I did a test before this. Let me see if I can find it. Um, yeah, I did a test before this just to make sure I could actually do it. Um, and as you can see, it's the same bat, it's the same texture, and you actually don't even lose any quality, right? Um, it's just, instead of spread out all over the place, it in one cohesive piece so i'm going to show you how to go from that to that and what from this what you can do with this is you can actually take it into photoshop and paint out this you can paint out you know there was a little bit of like a little bit of mess from the black like from the shading but i just painted that out later and that was fine um and you can paint out the text down here and even replace it in photoshop and you'll be a-okay so what i'm going to do is show you how i did that so i'm just going to start completely over with a brand new scene. The first thing you wanna do is bring in your photo scan. Ah, uh, yeah, just bring in your photo scan. Okay, so I'm gonna fast forward and just focus on the texture baking part specifically. The entire point I want to show here is how you can transfer the raw texture from your scan to any new UV layout that you get. And even though I got this nice clean flat layout following Rocket Lasso's workflow, you can still get some good layouts in even easier ways and still have a better texture map than you started off with. Like, look here. If I just click on some of these UV buttons, it still gives me some layouts that'll work. But if you wanna learn the exact steps on how you to redo the topology and UV unwrap it to get a similar map to this, I'd recommend you just check out Rocket Lasso's tutorial. I'll link it down below. But fair warning, you might need some popcorn and free time because it is a lengthy tutorial, but it's totally worth watching. So now we have the new UV. Let's compare it to the before and after. Before, we had all this mess, and now, we have just a singular, singular island, just one island. 
and it's clean too right so now the game becomes how do we get this texture onto this so what we're gonna do is let's go back to the starting layout select your new object your new um, mesh object and you're gonna overlap it with the original just gonna line it up that's almost lined up almost almost line it up as best as you can we are going to take this turn it into a mirror and bake the reflection of the original texture and when you bake it like that it's gonna bake it according to the new UV maps and so you can take it and put it on the original uh, or the new mesh that we made let's go into the face mode is this was that what it's called polygon mode if you click control a you're gonna select all of the polygons and what you're gonna do is you're gonna right click go down to normal transform you're gonna normal move and what it's gonna do what we're gonna do is kind of just inflate we're gonna inflate the mesh so it engulfs the entire baseball bat of the original baseball bat so again I'll even show you that's the original right there the grayish one right there is the uh, one the new one and we're just gonna inflate it just and make sure it engulfs the whole thing so when you have more complicated meshes you're probably gonna have to go around and make sure there's no overlap there's like there's a little overlap right there right oh, that's a little too much yeah there's a little overlap right there so just do it a little more so it covers that that's great that's good and honestly that's probably the only complicated part of the mesh uh that we probably have to check everything else looks good so what you gotta do now is you're gonna invert the normal so you're gonna click u and then r and then you see it turn blue that means it literally it actually inverted the normals the rays are gonna bounce off the inside now instead of the outside and that's important because again we're gonna turn this new mesh into a mirror to reflect the original texture onto itself and now what we got to do is make a new texture go into the physical shader and what you're gonna do is go to this plus button hold it down and make a new default material and then what you're gonna do is put that new default material in onto the new mesh double click it and we're gonna turn this into a mirror everything else is off 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 if you go to reflectance we're gonna remove what it already has and we're gonna add a GGX material. So that just makes it into a reflective material, right? And we don't want any roughness. We don't want it to be blurry. We don't want any of the fancy stuff. We just want the pure raw reflection right there. And as you can see, it's a mirror. And what we wanna do now is add a light. If we add a light right here, you gotta create light and <laughs> light. So you, you added a light right here and go to its um, general and we're gonna enable ambient illumination. All right, cool, we have the original bat and then on top of that, we have the mirror. So now what we're gonna do is go to this mirrored bat and we're gonna bake onto it. And again, this mirrored bat has the new UVs and it's gonna bake according to that. So if you right click it, we just type in bake and go to this material tags there's a tag called bake material and that's gonna allow you to bake your material so there's a lot of options here i'm just gonna go through it one by one file name choose the location you're gonna bake and save this texture map onto and then i'm gonna save it for a, as a png color depth you can do 16 bits because i don't want to lose any actual color data and right here you can actually just choose what resolution you want it to bake that image into Let's do 4096 by 4096. So we're gonna have 4,000 pixels width and height from that. Super sampling is gonna set it back to one. Pixel border, it essentially is the amount of pixels you want the border to extend. So I'm just gonna do that. All right, go into the options tab. Honestly, everything here you can pretty much leave off except for the reflection. Okay, cool. And then these buttons right here is actually how you bake so you can click bake to actually bake it but before we do that we actually want to make sure something's actually showing up on the map this is actually kind of nice because if something messes up we can just fix it before actually taking the time to bake so if you click that it's gonna turn black and it's just gonna calculate and so you just wait you know you can drink your coffee or something and as you can see it's a really low quality thumbnail but something popped up 
it actually looks correct so if it looks good and everything looks ready to go you can just hit bake and then wait and there you go look at that if you go to the exact file path that you saved it in you'll see the bag and voila i mean that that was pretty much the tutorial right there so we baked it this is the bake map and since this new bat that we made has the new topology we should just be able to slap it on and we're good we're gonna mute that one and we're gonna go back to the uh the clean the clean backup that we had if you just make a new material and again you can make a new material on the physical one too i showed you how to do that um but if you go to redshift and you just simply plug in the new texture by just dragging it in you know make a new material double click that drag this in and then bam you have the texture now look at that they are identical but yeah that's essentially how you can transfer your textures from a mess the, from the messy original to the new one you know and we can go around and you don't we never we didn't lose any quality from this the bat is pretty clear um the cracks are still there the crack we, we kept the crack you know even some of the bumps in the rust are still there you compare it to this one it's literally the same so yeah what was the point of actually doing all this so like i said if you wanted to like alter anything from the actual texture if you were to bake it all down it's way more straightforward on how you can actually paint stuff out so let's say i wanted to you know alter this a little bit so what you can do is with that new texture we just baked if you just go to photoshop drag in that new texture that we just did right here and then from here like the sky is the limit pretty much again my original goal was to um paint out this bat get this magnetic lasso tool select around whatever you want to paint out close the loop right click content aware fill take this brush and just choose the sections you want it to sample from and then once you do that it paints it out click okay and all of a sudden it's painted out that's great let's say let's see we want to let's say we want to do the same thing but with this text down here you know if you click that content where fill let's see if auto does the trick and and auto doesn't do it it's really sampling it's really doing a bad job at sampling i don't want it to sample that sticker there you go so i just uh erase the sampling part of that sticker and then all of a sudden there you go it's painted out so let's say you wanted to replace the text let's say baseball baby so what you can do is just take that put it to where the original text was let's just say it was like that we have the two things we wanted to paint out new text let's go ahead and save that as a p sd save that and then if we go back into cinema go back to our redshift uh texture and then replace that with the new altered psd file you'll see there is no bat and we have the new text this really does give you way more control of what you can do with the resulting texture so that was the whole tutorial i hope you learned how you can get a photo scanned object turned its really messy original texture into a nice clean one. And again, shout out to Rocket Lasso and Aaron Covret. Even I think I'm an experienced artist, but you never stop learning truly because I literally just learned about this tip last month. Hopefully this gives you guys and every anybody who stumbles upon this inspiration to go out and do your own photo scans. Don't be afraid of the daunting, really messy textures that it might give you because there's a solution for it now. This was all done in Cinema 4D. I was even thinking of doing a tutorial on how to do this in Blender. Everything I showed you in this, you can do in Blender. I might just make another tutorial once I figure out how to do that myself. Hopefully you learned something. So thank you for watching. I'm going to continue doing crazy 3D photo scans. So I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.